Hello everyone, I am Katerina Harvati and in this talk I would like to present to you our recent work that resulted in the identification of an early Homo sapiens fossil dating to approximately 210,000 years ago from Greece. As you probably know, this work concerns the virtual restoration, detailed study, and comparative analysis of the two human fossil crania from the Epidema site in Greece. It is a result of a collaboration between my team at the University of Tübingen and the Museum of Anthropology of the Medical School of the University of Athens, as well as other international institutions. First, a brief introduction to the site. Epidema, shown here, is a cave complex situated on the western coast of the Mani Peninsula in southern Greece. It was investigated by a team from the Museum of Anthropology back in the late 1970s and 80s with the initial aim to retrieve a human fossil cranium embedded in the breccia deposits near the ceiling of Cave A shown here on the lower left side. During the works to remove the specimen, a second fossil, Apidema II, was identified. The two were removed together in a breccia block and sent to Athens for preparation and cleaning. As you can see, the block of breccia is rather small, and the two specimens were found very close to each other. Based on geomorphological considerations, it was estimated that the skull breccia was between 150 to 400,000 years old. A few years ago, a small fragment from the Epidema II specimen was dated to approximately 160,000 years ago, confirming this hypothesis. Despite their importance, the fossil crania themselves remain unstudied and largely unpublished. Relatively little was known about them except preliminary assessments. In fact, previous observations were made exclusively on the more complete Apidema II and were based on a handful of reported measurements and published photographs. Although possible Neanderthal and pre-Neanderthal affinities had been noted, the specimen had suffered a lot of taphonomic distortion complicating its interpretation. Apidema I was not cleaned from the rock matrix until the early 2000s. It was never described and no published photographs of it existed. It is less complete but undistorted. In 2018 I was invited by my colleagues at the Museum of Anthropology of the University of Athens to lead the study of these important specimens. In addition to standard description, we conducted a virtual reconstruction and 3D geometric morphometric analysis of their shape in a comparative context in order to clarify them, their affinities. We also obtained new direct dates using uranium series dating of fragments from each cranium as well as from unidentified fragments of bone and the breccia matrix itself. In this talk I will focus on Apidema 1 whose analysis had surprising results with important implications for early Homo sapiens dispersals. Apidema 1 preserves the posterior part of the skull, mostly on the left side. Its overall dimensions and cranial bone thickness indicate adult status. It shows no Neanderthal features typical of this anatomical region. In lateral view, there is no occipital bun or associated lambda flattening, as seen uh, on the Neanderthal specimen La Chapelle aux Saints, shown here on the right hand side. In posterior view, it also does not show an en bon profile typical of Neanderthals. Rather, its parietal walls are nearly parallel and its occipital plane is low, both plesiomorphic conditions. A faint supranic depression is much smaller and shallower than the Neanderthal condition represented here by the La Chapelle aux Saints individual, or than the condition seen on some earlier European middle Pleistocene specimens such as those from Cima de los Huesos. In contrast, it is most similar in size to the supranic depression reported on the Elias Spring specimens, specimen from Kenya. Apidema 1 also lacks the associated structures of the Neanderthal supranic fossa, such as the occipital torus. When we examined the internal structure of this area, the diploic layer does not show thinning, unlike the Neanderthal condition. In this aspect also, it is similar to that observed in supranic depressions on modern human crania, including those reported from middle and late Pleistocene African specimens, such as Lake Eyasi and Aduma. We therefore consider the Epidema 1 supranic depression as not homologous to the Neanderthal feature. 
We conducted two sets of shape analysis of the Epidema 1 reconstruction at a comparative sample of fossil Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, Middle Pleistocene Africans, and Middle Pleistocene Eurasians. The first analysis used 30 3D landmarks and semi landmarks from the neurocranium, including the mid sagittal profile from Bregma to Inion, but also six bilateral points. The second analysis focused only on the mid sagittal profile in order to expand the dataset so as to include additional important but more fragmentary fossils. In both principal components analysis, the Epidema 1 reconstruction plots within the Homo sapiens convex hull, shown here in blue, and away from the ranges of any of the other groups used in the analysis. In order to visualize some of the differences between Epidema 1 and several relevant specimens, we conducted manual superimpositions of 3D models. In order to keep the superimpositions comparable, the comparative specimens in each case stayed in the original configuration and manipulations were carried out on Apithema 1. Apithema 1 was scaled to the biauricular breadth of the comparative specimen, then translated and rotated so that the transmeatal axis of the two specimens matched, and finally Apithema 1 was rotated around the transmeatal axis to match the orientation of the external auditory meatus and the supramastoid crest of the comparative specimen. These comparisons clearly show the differences between the Neanderthal shape, represented here by the specimen La Chapelle aux Saints, shown in blue, and that of Apidema 1 in yellow, but also between the Petralona specimen in blue and Apidema 1. In contrast, the overall shape of the Apidema 1 reconstruction is a closer match to School 5 and to a recent modern human specimen shown here on the right, as revealed also by a principal components analysis. Finally, we conducted a classification analysis and examined the overall shape similarities between individual specimens as revealed by Procrustes distances. Apidema 1 was classified as Homo sapiens with posterior probability greater than 90% in both our datasets. Furthermore, in both of the analysis, it was closest in overall shape as measured by Procrustes distance to a modern human individual. We used uranium series dating to directly date the two crania, as well as unidentified bone fragments from the same breccia block and the breccia matrix itself. The dates from the bone fragments fall in two rough clusters, one around 160,000 years ago and one over 200,000. The date for Apidema 1 at 210,000 years ago is similar to that second cluster. The rock matrix was dated to 150,000 years ago. This represents the time when the sediments consolidated into rock and therefore nothing could be added to them beyond that point in time. In conclusion, Apidema 1 does not show any Neanderthal-derived features. A faint supraniac depression appears different from the Neanderthal condition and more similar to that seen in African Middle and Late Pleistocene fossils. In contrast, it possesses a combination of ancestral and modern human-derived features, it plots with and is classified as Homo sapiens, and is closest in overall shape to modern human individuals in all of our analysis. We therefore consider that Apidema 1 likely represents an early Homo sapiens individual. This finding has important implications for modern human origins and dispersals. Given its geological age, Apidema 1 likely represents an early dispersal of Homo sapiens, which occurred earlier and reached further than previously thought. This fits well with evidence of Homo sapiens presence in the Levant at least 180,000 years ago, and with paleogenetic evidence pointing to an ancient interbreeding event between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens before 200,000 years ago. Finally, it matches expectations of complex demographic history and high variability in this geographically central region. Our results therefore suggest that an early modern human dispersal out of Africa took place before 200,000 years and its geographic expansion was not limited to the Near East as previously thought, but instead reached all the way to Europe, a continent that until now was considered the exclusive realm of Neanderthals until approximately 45,000 years ago. Our findings further highlight the significance of Southeast Europe and the Eastern Mediterranean in understanding human evolution and dispersals. 
I'd like to thank all team members, collaborators and co-authors, the funding sources for this work and you for your attention.